All right, hey guys, OFD checking in here, and this might be a little bit of a long one because I'm going to talk about um, the quartz crisis just a little bit and my Seiko 7548, which I have down here, which I actually bought in 1982. I'm the original owner of the watch. Did have it refurbished, um, a few, I don't know, about five, six years ago. Had it completely gone through, and um, now the watch, I just kind of keep it as a keepsake. Wear it every once in a while and everything. But anyways, it, it definitely ties in to swatch watches. Now, this is my this fake Omega Moon swatch that I recently purchased, but I kind of wanted to tie that all together into the uh, this whole, I guess, uh, overview of the Moon swatch. But anyways, I bought this watch, like I said, in 1982. Uh, when I bought the watch, um, there was a thing called layaway. I'm not sure if anyone does that, where you could go put, you know, 10% down, which was 25 bucks at the time. Uh, this watch was around $250, so I had to put $25 down, and then then hold it for me for 90 days, as long as I came in and made minimum payments on it, until the watch was paid for, and then I could pick it up. I was 12 years old, so I didn't have $250, but it was something that my dad, he signed off for me to do it, because I was a young kid. I think he had to be 18 at the time to do that. Um, it signed off for me to do that, and I've had the watch ever since. So when I bought this watch, though, I didn't realize that the quartz crisis was happening for the Swiss watch companies out there, that they were going through quite a bit of trauma because in this era, in this time in America and pretty much the world, convenience was becoming a big thing. We were coming out of the 1970s into the 1980s. A lot of technology had really come around and having a quartz watch that kept really good precise time without having to be moved on your wrist all the time without having to be hand wound or anything like that was a big thing. Battery life at the time was questionable. The Japanese came out with better battery technology as well as amazing movement technology. As a matter of fact, the movement inside of this watch is basically a 6309 uh, automatic all metal movement that's been converted um, over to a battery. That's the way they did it back then. And so super robust watch, purpose built dive watch back in the day. And this was a really impressive timepiece in 1982. Uh, very, very impressive. So these were the watches um, that were coming out from Japan that were putting the putting the hurt down on the Swiss watch industry and really um, making them struggle. And they weren't caught up with the battery technology. They weren't moving in that direction. And it was causing a lot of big companies to bumble. That allowed Swatch Group to come around. Uh, Hayek, Mr. Hayek, uh, started the Swatch Group back at that time. And Swatch Watches came out in 1983. So just a year after I bought this watch, the Swatch Group came out and they started building these little plastic watches. And I was, I have to admit, when they first came out, I was enamored. I thought they were fun. Um, I bought, I think it was in 1983 or 1984, I bought a, a green kind of jelly looking one that was see-through. You could see the movement. And I, I wore it. I wore it a little bit. But the funny thing is, I was at a family event and my uncle, who was also into watches at the time, saw it on my wrist and he said, why are you wearing that thing? And I just remember kind of being taken aback. And he said, you've got that really, really nice Seiko watch that you bought and paid for. And he said, it's just 10 times better than that thing. Why would you wear that? You know, I think at the time as a kid, I was kind of, I didn't get it. And I was kind of like, man, my uncle's being mean and this and that. But I did probably wear that swatch for another week. And then I put it away in a drawer. And this was the watch I wore for the rest of my life. I mean, pretty much. Um, now I've got different watches, of course. But this watch spent, I, many developmental things with me happened with this watch on my wrist. So anyways, long story there, but it kind of goes back to the old um, saying of uh, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. And I feel like the latest swatch release is, is that kind of fool me twice type of thing. So, you know, we all know that in 2022, Omega released these moon swatches. This is a fake version of the, <coughs> excuse me, of the Mission of Mars watch. And so, you know, what do I mean by fool me, fool me twice? Um, this is, I think these are kind of a gimmick watch. I told you guys in the first video when I unboxed this fake one that I think even the real ones of these are plastic toy watches. And as we see more videos, I've seen videos where the, the pushers are starting to fall off the real ones and things like that. Amazingly, this fake one I've had for quite a while and you can't pull the pushers off of it. I mean, it's actually pretty solidly built. I think actually more solidly built than the original. Now it does have its problems, its issues, of course. But so, you know, recently, here we go. Again, Swatch, they release these watches. Huge phenomenon. They get people into the stores, but they're not getting people into the stores that I know of selling their other watches. They're getting people into the stores looking for these. And people are getting a little bent out of shape that you can't find these hardly at all in the stores. 
Also, they said they were going to sell them online, and they never did that. They decided, no, uh, I think Hayek Jr. says that you want that in-store personal experience when you buy one of these watches. I'm like, come on, it's a plastic watch. Overpriced plastic watch at $260 nowadays. I mean, back in the day, I paid $250 for this, my 7548. And I think that is a that was worth the money back then. These, these for $260 for the real one is not worth it. But let me talk a little bit more about this fake version because I think that's what a lot of you guys showed up for. So looking at the watch, you guys can tell it's the fake one because over here, this is supposed to be a tenth of a second counter. That's actually a 24-hour dial there. I think it would have been really great. And if you guys, whoever's faking this out there is listening, just make that a 24-hour dial and you'll have fixed this watch. It'll actually make it better. Um, now you can use it if you want to as a, you know, an AM, PM indicator. Um, it'd actually be kind of cool if they took one of these and just put like half the dial red, half the dial black on that little sub dial there to, to indicate day and night. That'd also be a super easy way to do that. This watch is actually, from what I understand, I haven't taken it apart, but I do believe there's an aluminum case that's been coated in a plastic here to imitate the original bio ceramic um, of the the real moon swatch, I guess you'd call it. The crystal on this one, amazingly, is actually a mineral crystal, a heavily domed mineral crystal. Now, is that good or bad? I mean, if it gets scratches on it, you're not going to get them out of there with just some, um, you know, polishing cloth or anything like that, like you probably could with the acrylic plastic crystal. But anyways, it is what it is. The strap works fine. I wouldn't be surprised if this is made in the same factory or whatever the original one is made in. Also on this one, I now in the video, I said hermetically sealed and the batteries under here. That's not the case. You can see you can actually pop the case back off here. And inside of here is a Chinese uh, mecha quartz style movement. It's one of the other big differences you can tell is when you get this one started, you can see it has that smooth sweep of the chronograph hand, which is actually way cooler uh, than, the, than the ticking sweep of the real one. I think this is really cooler. Um, nice clean sweep there. Uh, all of these hands are adjustable also. You can pull the crown out and use the pushers to adjust them into place if anything's out of order there. So, I mean, I paid, I think, around $58 for this. They've come down to around $30. And, you know, it's a decent watch for the money if you want something that looks that way. Now, it's not super well made. I think on the originals, these are stickers. This is also a sticker. And you can see right down here, it's got some little bubbles under it. And I wouldn't be surprised if you were out you know, in the salt water, well, not in salt water with this, with the pushers and stuff, but out in the sun too much or anything like that, this is probably going to start to peel off of this one and even the original ones, because I think on the original one, it's a sticker too. So go ahead and stop that chronograph and get it reset. The watch works great, keeps really, really good time. One thing I did notice, and I'll see if I can get up here a little bit closer for you guys to see, I'll try and zoom in on it. It's, you guys see on that sub dial, that 24 hour sub dial, it looks like we've got the hand is dragging. You can see there between that eight and the six position over there, you can see that it looks like the hand is dragging on there, possibly. You can see a swirl mark around there and where the paint's actually coming off. So that's actually a, a QC issue, you know, with this fake moon swatch. But, you know, it's a, you know, if you want to buy, honestly, I wouldn't spend the $300 on a real one. Um, so if you wanted to buy something, you can find these on AliExpress. I think I left the link in the, um, unboxing video of this one. So I'll leave a link to the unboxing video so you can check that out if you want to do that. But I'll go ahead and throw this one on my wrist and, and you guys are here. So we'll go ahead and do the loom shot um, of the watch. So um, one of the, I, before we do that, though, one of the things I thought would be fun is what if like AliExpress just like, or whoever's making this, like take all the Omega off of it, take the swatch off of it, leave the watch the same, but do have some fun with it because you, you know, the colors are already funky and fun, right, that they come out with. But how about how about you guys make a camo version of this and do do something of your own to the dial? That'd be kind of fun. Uh, maybe something with uh, different colored pushers and a different colored crown. You could kind of have fun and play with it and kind of make it a little bit more of your own. You know, the case is fine. The movement's fine. Change this to a 24-hour dial or an AM, PM dial. And this watch would be super, super freaking cool. So, all right, guys, let's put it on my wrist and then stick around to that loom shot. All right, the watch looks good, wears good. I've worn this around, just playing around. My wife's worn it more than me, um, just because it's fun, kind of fun to look at and stuff. You don't see many of these out in the wild, honestly, so I don't know how many they've actually made and sold. Since they've come out, I've only seen one. I was on vacation in Tahoe at a sandwich place, and I saw a guy come in wearing one. It was, you know glaringly obvious, at least to me, a watch guy, what he was wearing. So let's dim the lights and check out the loom. 
we're at. So I'll go ahead and hit it real quick with the light here. And if I remember in the unboxing video, yeah, it has pretty good loom. It fades out on these indices super, super quick, but the hands stay lit pretty much, um, you know, a couple hours. Pretty good. So, all right, guys, you like the video, give me a thumbs up down there at the bottom. And if you've not subscribed to the OFD channel yet, please do. Please do. Thanks, guys.